why didn't the professor play professionally? The truth is like nobody would consider my resume legit enough to get an NBA workout. Mm -hmm. And then like once in a while, I actually will go crazy and live up to that narrative. And I'm gonna get moves off no matter what. Oh, this yeah. guy is big. This guy is oh, really big, big. This guy's name is Big Jim. <laughs> Were there a lot of girls coming to your guys' games? Like. Oh yeah, it was. The group, groupie central, <laughs> wild, yeah, back then, wild. Yeah, when I moved to LA, I was like, that's why I like, party every night of the week. Really? I moved to LA at 06, and I would party on a Monday. <laughs> was there something that propelled you into, like, finding faith? I think God uses a whole bunch of things, never, like, one thing, you know what yeah. I mean? But, yeah, like, I mean, going broke, and one ends out of nowhere. You know, I actually never said this publicly. Grayson, yeah. welcome back to the Courtside Club. Thank you for joining me once again. You're our first episode of season one. Honored. Thanks for having me back. You kicked us off the right way. We are now into season two. Um, Let's go. I'm excited to catch up. This is season two? This is season two of Courtside right, okay. Club. Let's go. It's like we're like midway through mm. season two. I see. Changing it up a little bit. Taking back ownership. My fans, obviously, like, I probably have on my channel, I think, like, five videos of us together. Okay. And I think three of them are in, like, my top five most popular videos on Let's my go. channel. Let's go. I love that. Where you're teaching me how to do things. Those like, blew up. Yeah. I think also it was, like, early. You, we were kind of, like, early in the YouTube space, like, for hoop creators collabing probably wasn't as common. No, at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we so. just had, like, a little camera. Like literally one camera and you just taught me some moves. I think one, one of my favorite ones is like behind the back and then it goes between your opposite leg. Yeah. You, There's the like one? no name for that move, but no. it's like, it's like behind the, all the way behind your back and between the legs. Yeah. I still do it all the time. Yeah. We made up names for it to like title the videos, but even the I thumbnails are just like so old school YouTube. But anyway, mm -hmm. I know that my fans obviously love you and are excited for you to come back on it was a good though. crossover because my my fan you know you have a lot of guys right yeah, like, of course I, I never even told you this i've met so many dudes that like you're gonna be with rach there you're like the dream girl oh. for so many guys you know what i mean especially from that time period you know people knowing 2k and stuff yeah there was like grown men who wanted to come to the shoots like, oh that's funny just to meet you but I, they were like two heart eyes. I was like, I'm not bringing you up there for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it was just, I don't know. But. You know what I've been getting more recently, which you probably get, is people saying, you were my childhood, which like makes me feel like old in a sense. But it's like crazy because I started 2K, it was 10 years ago now or over 10 years. Yeah, it's like a long, I know. They were like, you were my childhood. Like, you were my high school. And then like, they're grown adults now. They're like, I don't even play the video games that much anymore. And I'm just like, well, this is weird. The time is going by this quickly. And it's um, funny because it'll just happen. There'll be one year where you'll hear that for the first time. Yeah. And you don't know when, why, when it does it turn to no. retro nostalgia? Yeah. I don't happening. know, but it happened for, well, it happened to me a while ago. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? But look, people would say that to me, even like when I was starting YouTube, but they'd say it about and one. Yeah. And then I don't know what year, you know, Spider-Man, you was in the Spider-Man series. Yeah. Then that became, I grew up on that. And I don't know what year that was. It was like. Oh. So you it transitioned but, from like, I used to watch you with Anne One to like, oh my gosh, I loved the Spider Man series. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people with me don't even know what Anne One is. You know, like half of my audience never heard it. And, or they may have heard, but they're not like familiar. Yeah. You know, they just hear the culture like, like oh, that was an Anne One movie. You know what I mean? But they don't really know what it was. Yeah. Should yeah. we reintroduce them to Anne One? Yeah, man. That was your keep game. That was your start. Yeah, 03. It wasn't your start in basketball, obviously, but right, that but was what, pro. I mean, you have guys and I even watched your interview recently with KG, like you have <laughs> NBA legends who are calling you a legend and you are, but that is really what just propelled you into this space and gave you such a respect on your name, put some respect on your name. Like that's when you got it, you know, and you've kept it. Yeah, it was great. I mean. I was actually a fan of, I was just a fan of that one. And I went and tried out, not knowing that the whole reality series that season was about the tryouts. I think I was so like deer in the headlights of everything that was happening. Yeah. Things were moving so fast. I remember I watched the first episode. We were already halfway through the tour. And I was hoping like one of my highlights would be on there. So like I could maybe like pause it and then call my friend and be like, yo, I'm on the episode. Yeah. And then like, 
it was all about the contestants on the reality show. <laughs> I didn't really, so the first episode, I'm like on more than half of it. Like the start, you could you could say the star of the show, but I wasn't. I feel like I wasn't notified of that, or I probably was, but I was so young minded. So many things were happening that I didn't fully process that. Yeah. And I remember it was all cringe for me because I was like, why do I look like that? Why do I sound like that? You know, so yeah, and what was the and introduction? Then you had your friends calling you like, what's going on? <laughs> like, yeah, it was it was very surreal and such a cool moment, but yeah, it was my introduction to the it was a blessing. It was great. It how was great. long were you with and one? It was seven seasons on ESPN. It was from 03 to 08 for me. But and one went from 98 to yeah. 08. Ten yeah. years. Yeah. The and one mixtape tour. The brand obviously is still around. Right. Yeah. Which is in such an interesting place now. It's so different because I feel like, you know, we're getting older. But that culture, the culture of and one was what and one was in the past. Now it has become like in a sense, it's just more of a brand, you know, but they were so smart. Well, nobody even knows the brand. Still, like the more people I talk to, like they don't even know the clothing is still around, like, even though it's like at Walmart. Yeah. You know, it's like a mass brand now. Yeah. <laughs> not not really a cool kid brand. Yeah. But I talk to tons of people who are like, what happened to that, man? That brand was sick. And I'll be like, well, the clothing's still around. I'll be like, no way. And I'm yeah. like, well, yeah, you've probably seen it. You just didn't know it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think like that, that was what made it what it was because you attached people and culture to it. And that's mm -hmm. actually was the success of it. Do you know yep. what I mean? The show was successful, obviously, but then you just had like that feel to it. I was already culturing it. Senior year in high school, my se <laughs> if you look at my, if you look at typing professor AAU slash high school mix, I have like all my childhood all the way up to the senior year in high school. I Wait, you had that on your channel? Yeah, it's on my channel. I uploaded oh, like sick. one of my early vids, like yeah. ten, over 10 years ago. I have the Tai Chi and ones on <laughs> my senior year. So yeah. I was actually... My first day at school fit, my ju my sophomore, junior, senior year was actually an and one head to toe, a G either a Jordan or an and one head to toe fit. Yeah. So I was like actually a super fan. Well, you told me also <laughs> like you played JV up until junior year, right? Yeah. Like you didn't play varsity. Until yeah, it was so I don't shameful. mean to like laugh in your face, but like. No, <laughs> at that time. Well, I love so it now because that's my whole MO. I've always been like an underdog. Like some of the young kids now probably don't receive me that way, right? It's more like I'd be the favorite, but I'm actually more, the true, my true career, the because there's always a digital narrative, narrative of how something is and then a real life. Right. The course. real life narrative is I'm always an underdog. So. Yeah, that I learned a lot though. It was good for me, like playing JV and all that, being you know, and counted I, out. I think the burning question now for probably your new fans and and didn't watch back in the day and maybe haven't seen your podcast is, why didn't the professor play professionally? Mm -hmm. Why weren't you in the NBA? Yeah, you know? what happened? You're yeah. meeting NBA players. You're crossing up everyone. You're, you know, on the on the tour, getting buckets. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, because I'm such an under, there's no way I'm gonna get drafted, right? I mean, yeah. there was that would have been completely unrealistic. I started playing, so I graduated 17, I made and one 18, and signed away my eligibility. So I played one year JUCO, but I I already got cut from three other community colleges, got one, got a walk on spot because my dad persuaded the coach <laughs> to give me a shot. I was supposed to redshirt. People got injured, so I actually played, but I played three minutes a game, and if the game was close, I didn't even get in there. Yeah. And then after my freshman year, I improved like 300% to a point where I'd hold court during open gym. Like, the scholarship to athletes, it's a good thing I didn't come back, right? Because now the coaches would have had to make a political decision. If I was best player right. in the gym, it's hard to play your scholarship athletes over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes you got to go where the money's at. Of course. Luckily for them, I didn't even come back. I just went to NY, signed away my rights, and went pro. So nowadays with NIL, technically I have three years left of college. But <laughs> Oh, my God. How hilarious would that be? <laughs> I know. Wait a second. This video is being titled, The Professor is Going Back to College. <laughs> yeah, three years, college eligibility. But you would put butts in seats. Oh, my gosh. I know. It's funny to think, right? That would be... <laughs> Wait, I'm like, can we petition for this? But, I don't know if this is age is a thing, but anyway. Yeah, I don't know either, but <laughs> it was just funny. So, so no, the reality is what people I've done actually done four videos on my YouTube channel about this, but still every video, every comment, go to the NBA. Why are you not in the NBA? Yeah. Then there's other person like this dude was net, he's garbage at basketball. He never had a shot. So the truth is, is like the the answer is it's somewhere in the middle. So 
at 18, after my freshman year in college, I literally improved like 300% that spring and summer right there. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Something clicked. Like, I started lifting weights. Yeah. Uh, I got a little, you know what it is? I'm just a late bloomer. Some people just mature. I was always like. That's what I was going to ask. Cause, but that's yeah. kind of wild, though. To, yeah, I know. Like, that's the summer that you take a leap. Like, my basketball summer I took a leap was between 6th and 7th grade. You know, I was 12. Mm. <laughs> Well, the thing you know? was, I always was very skilled, though. Or, like, like, Michael Jordan's was, I think, also his, like, junior year or something. Like, Michael Jordan's was another, like, kind of late, but it was high school. Yeah. And then he had another, like, mini jump in college, but... Well, he's still a beast, though, because he got yeah. cut from the varsity. He's a freshman. Like, this doesn't even count. Like, right. It's a dumb story. <laughs> like, his story... Like, I got cut. You know what right. I'm saying? Like... <laughs> Michael Jordan's trying to play I, That come. whole Michael Jordan got cut. It's like, bro, he was, he was on JV as a freshman. So, yeah, you got cut from the varsity. But yeah. anyway... No, but uh, so I was always skilled though. Like in fourth grade, my trainer showed me the Iverson crossover, and it, the thing is with me is that what what held me back in pro basketball too was I always looked like like ten or fifteen years younger than I am. Yeah. But it not only just looked young, looked like an actual like kid, a child always. You know what I'm saying? So usually, if you don't pass the eye test, you need to average like thirty to make up for your so they can trust that yeah. your game is like that, even looking like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the reality. Like Earl Boykins playing the NBA's 5'5 five, five or whatever. He averaged like 30 in college. So I was never that guy. Like my true narrative is I'm actually like an underdog and I really surprise people. Like if I play with NBA players like right now, the false social media narrative would be like, oh, you didn't break nobody's ankles. You didn't even hang at this. Or like, like I'm supposed to go crazy. Yeah. But the true narrative is, is. I always been an underdog and play at a lot higher level than they think. And then like once in a while, I actually will go crazy and live up to that narrative. And I'm going to get moves off no matter what. Yeah. I can get moves off on any, doesn't, I got moves off Drew Holiday. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I'm getting moves off. Yeah. I was going to ask <laughs> who has been that, that guy that you pause, got moves off on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and you know, Drew Holiday, to be fair, like you got a couple bucks. He's the best defender I've ever played against. So that's, he's not the guy, but. I got moves on NBA. Play. I got one on Daryl Armstrong, like cross him up, fell in the crowd, score. Like I went to the buggy tried like block it and he like, tripped into the crowd. Oh no. But I went between his legs. Wait, so all of these are public. Have there been any where you're where you're like don't have an audience? Oh, uh a lot of private runs with NBA players, but you know, when I'm in that environment, I was playing like Team it's ball? less about the show because there's no crowd there. So I'm not really like, you know, you go off the heezy in between <laughs> the leg. Like maybe here and there, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because some moves are, some trick moves are actually effective if you know what you're doing. So uh, between the legs here and there, but not for the most part. I was just playing more like, like just getting a real sweat in playing conventional basketball. Um, but yeah. So what you're, what you're really saying is I don't really play hard unless there's a crowd. No, but I'll play as flashy. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't play as flashy. I actually I would now because that's the only way I play. I have no interest <laughs> in no regular basketball. There's no point. It's boring to you. It's too boring, and like I only look at the game as showtime now. I'm I'm more entertainer than Hooper. I'm like 60, 70 percent entertainer, okay. yeah. 20, 30 percent or 30, 40 percent Hooper. But to go back to what you're saying is the truth was when I was 18, I signed away my college eligibility. So I did play pro. I played the ABA, played the IBA. I even played the CBA, which is the old G League. I actually was trying to make the NBA my first three or four years on end when I was still trying to make the NBA. Oh, really? Okay. But in that time, the truth is, like, nobody would consider my resume legit enough to get an NBA workout. Mm -hmm. But then later, I got a lot better. My prime, I feel like game-wise, I'm, I'm I haven't reached my – in my person, maybe I'm delusional, but I feel like I haven't reached my prime now. I haven't had no decline. I, like people that know me, like my guys have been with me for ten years, they don't feel like my game declined at all. Yeah. But, but as far as uh, you don't think like speed, agility, quickness, any no. of that? Mm -mm, no, not. I mean, that's sick. But but I don't play every three days, right? You play a real season, I probably would have had more miles. I probably would have got more worn down. Yeah. Everybody would have forty, right? Yeah. Even LeBron doesn't explode like he used to. Yeah. But I never jumped, so I don't need, <laughs> that, mine's just quickness. Good. I'm still yeah. as quick as I ever was, for a fact. A lot right. of people think I was in my prime and and one, but they're only saying that because we play an arena with five on five, and then we're like running up and down. Yeah. As, instead of a half court game, but they're right. just basing it off. It's just the look, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Um, Yours are also kind of like mini movements. Also, yes. it's not a quick twitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But lateral, right? Yeah. So, so the truth is, I think 
when I started working out with NBA players or D1 players and I realized like, oh, I could go back and forth this level, you know, like mm -hmm. that was new news to me until it happened. Right. Yeah. I was like in my late 20s. So like you're never going to get a shot if you're five, a 5'10 white dude, like being a rookie at age what, 28, yeah. 25, 20. It's a stretch. right? It's just not. And then the high ups didn't look at street ball as credible. Right. Your street ball career is like. It's more on par to them with like the globe trotters. You need to, right. you need you need you need D one pro for a year at least, mm -hmm. or a couple years to put in work. You need to be in the, what back then was the the CBA or the D league, now the G league. You got to mm -hmm. prove yourself for like a year or two before an NBA high ups can be like, oh, he might be able to play with us. It ain't yeah. gonna be like, on and one going crazy with highlights. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So for context for the people, the truth is I wasn't good enough when I was in college or, or first going to and one because I was too green. You weren't good enough at that time for, but it's also, I think, and I wanted to ask you about it, how you feel about just the landscape of the NBA today. Cause it, it is so different than even it was. I feel like back then it was also a bit more traditional yeah. basketball. Mm -hmm. And you see now how the game has changed so much. The players are scoring so much more too. Yeah. Some traditionalists don't like it. Some are like, Oh, the game's better. I feel like I'm somewhere in the middle mm -hmm. because the competitive nature to me doesn't seem to be as there as it's it was. It's too big before. a business. Like the all-star game, like nobody tries. I mean, that was awful. The game it was, was all time worth this one. The and game was really bad. I, I mean, think as Adam the business Silver grows, upset. yeah, the stakes, the personal brand for each player comes bigger. The stakes get higher. So There's money. more money. And so people don't want to look bad and they yeah. don't want to be compared next to the other superstar. So you're right. But on the, I'm like you, though. On the other side of the coin, the game, it'll always change. It's, it's not going to stay like it was. In the, it's impossible. It's always going right. to change. It ha everything changes. Like music, right? Like Some people are like, I only like 90s hip-hop. But it's like, w w it was supposed to stay like 90s forever? Of course it's not. It's always going to yeah. change. Yeah, so I'm not worried about it. I think Am one and Flashy Basketball had a big influence For sure. on the game today and like a lot like the way the guards play. And, like, when we were playing, like, Iverson and Jay Will were, like, the first guards that were trusted to play like that. Because even Skip to my Lou, who's the first and one player, right? Mm -hmm. One of my idols. He had to let go of his street ballness to be accepted in the NBA, which is what I dealt with in the CBA and all that. Like, I go yeah. off. I actually had 27 and 7 in a what would have been a, a D league, you know, it would have been the new age G league, uh -huh. right? It was a CBA. It was NBA players playing. They dropped down. But it was like they didn't they didn't want me to be good. They was like, ah, it's street ball. It's like, ah, it's gimmicky. Right. Do you think that you could handle yourself in today's NBA game the way it's played? Because it's different now. It's quicker. And it's a five yeah. out stretch. So I feel like even somebody who's, you know, smaller, she, yeah. like you see somebody like Steph Curry who has, you know, dominated for however many years. That wasn't the traditional player. Yeah. And that's a guy who even also came from a smaller college, you know? Yeah, I think I'd have to work out different. I'm not in good enough shape. I'm not saying yeah, yeah, and I'm not saying yeah. in that, but I'm saying take your like stature, your routine when you were playing games every week and you were kind of in the mix there playing five on five. That would that translate to today's NBA game? Do you think it would be more accepted? For sure, for <laughs> sure. I mean, like, I, yeah, I think it would have worked back then too. It's like. Basketball, though, it, when you get to the elite levels, it's actually really, basketball's snobby. It's very snob. <laughs> no, like NBA high ups, they're very snobby. Like, and even like it's very alpha. So it's like if you don't fit that mold or what they thought was like, oh, are you like that? You know what I'm saying? And they're like, ah, oh, you scrub. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So there's an attitude towards street ball for the yeah. longest. Not now. Now I got friends who are assistant coaches and they'll be like, you a legend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If it was like this back then, it would have been different. I probably might have got there based off marketing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? True. Actually, yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, for sure. True. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's I'm not going to say like I'll go crazy. In the, like today, like I'm not in good enough shape to play every three days and go over there and play full court defense and all that. Yeah. Because I play a lot of half court because that's just like easier for social media. Yeah. And you get the ball more. Well, now, like you said, <laughs> like you're you're playing for entertainment, period. Yeah. Like you want to win, but it's uh, it's not. No. And the truth ball. is, it, it wouldn't be like I would just play at a higher level than people think. And that's enough to be a win. You know, like the social yeah. media narrative is like 
that people want you to live up to your name and like go crazy no matter who you play against. But the truth is, like if people saw me play, it's always like more like an underdog situation, and it'll be like, man, I was impressed you were doing it. And then I once so I'll get a move off and live up to the name. They'll be like, oh shit. Yeah. Like yesterday, just yesterday, I got in a one on one with dude six five, but he's like, it was a college, I don't know, college level, maybe pro, I don't know. And he beat me in the first game. We played to seven. He beat me like seven five. And then we played again and like looked like he was having the edge. And then the crowd was kind of like, a lot of people just never see me play. So they're mm -hmm. like, dang, can is he gonna lose twice? Like, yeah. And then I wasn't getting no moves off either. But then some point I kind of like got used to this guy's game and footwork. And then I crossed him out a couple of times. Dude almost tripped over like <laughs> twice. And they lost it because they're like, oh shit. Right. That stuff is real. You know what I'm saying? And then I actually won the second game. And so yeah, it's my whole thing. It's more under. So you asked me about playing the NBA. It's more underdog ish. But I, I'd get moves off against anybody. I'd say that. Could you do a series? Do you think NBA players would be up for that? Uh, they're so busy, and and then like you said, the personal brands are always at stake. So if so I collab, it's, like, it's their ego. Like if they if they lose to you. It's not good business wise. Yeah. It ain't even good business wise to get one move done on them. I saw the other day it was a street True. baller. They were playing with Kyrie and he stood. He like hit the ball away from him and posted it. Oh, from Kyrie. And we, yeah, yeah. if you're a hooper, like that happens to everybody. I played yeah. a homeless dude yesterday. He hit the ball, but I was trying to do too many moves. You know what I'm saying? Like you get it. Anybody can get a hand on a ball, right? I could yeah. I could go step them. I get a hand on a. It doesn't mean anything. Right. But uh. Yeah, but that got posted, and then that has a narrative. Like, oh, yo, he locked, he locking, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like a false narrative. Right. So it wouldn't be good for anybody's, if I shook him up or something. But but we know that could happen, though, right? Like, I can go between anybody's, it don't even matter. You're going to have to foul me. I'm going to do a move. I'm going to get a move off in the course of a game. So if I collab with the NBA player, I would only collab with them. Like, I'll play 2v2 with, with them. Got it. With somebody. Yeah, because... Yeah. I'm for the good of other people's brand. I don't want to have like a threatening, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm past trying to be the best. <laughs> you like, turn into the villain. It's like your villain arc. <laughs> yeah. It's all about entertainment at this phase though. Right. Like, yeah. like it's all about entertainment. It's not about being the best. Like I left that way, like the early two thousands, like trying to be the best. Cause how good can you, I mean, I'm not in the NBA. So when street yeah. ballers are trying to be the best, it's a very small ball viewpoint. Cause like, how good can you be You're playing at the park? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I left my I left that back in college for me trying to be the best. Yeah, like, yeah, it's a hard feat, ago. right? I feel like if you're not, and then this is your career, it better be in, you better got to be entertaining. You know what I mean? Because yeah, if you just do if you play conventional, he's doing step backs. Well, it's like we're all competing for eyes. We already saw Steph Curry fifty. He already did that. Oh, you're just making fun of my fundamental game. No, I'm not even I'm saying that. And listen, it. people are marketable for a lot of different I'm reasons. <laughs> I was just saying this is how I look at. It. Yeah, I always try yeah. to be. Try to do something that's not like the league. Yeah. But yours is for all different, though. Think about it. So there's, like, the cuteness factor. There's, like, it's, relatability. Yeah. Well, I've never, with my content, tried to be, like, hey, I'm the best. I don't – and everybody's, like, oh, one-on-one -on -one this. I was, like, I'm never playing one-on-one. -on -one. You guys will never catch me dead playing one-on-one -on -one against anyone. Wait, why not, though? Why not? You might bust somebody. I, I wouldn't, though. I actually <laughs> okay. hate playing one-on-one. -on -one. You're not a one-on-one -on -one player. Yeah. No, at all. But there's nothing wrong with that, right? People don't know that. I'm a two-dribble yeah. – shoot player sure like sure. that's all i need to but i'm not gonna sit here and do all the things yeah i'll you tell know? you the moves though why not using shakes <laughs> <laughs> right. but i think relatability myself up doing that <laughs> yeah i think i think but people can be marketable it's not always that like skill For base sure. i think like like even look at like uh people in the basketball influence big followings of dudes ain't they're like college level or decent but they might be really good at social relatable yeah. all you need to do is be entertaining an entertaining watch how do you feel about the state of the WNBA right now? I have full on debates with my uh, viewers about lowering the rims in the WNBA. Oh, because well, I personally, yeah, we think actually, no, wait, what do you think? Do you think well, that the WNBA should lower the rim? I don't so think it needs any help though. I think everything right now is on the rise though. With the college game, those girls who are super popular with the NIL, they're gonna then go to the WNBA. It's gonna make the WA even bigger because like you. everything's going, everything's going up right now. And honestly, it's a it's a it's a BS. How many dunks are there? It's like two dunks again. You're not even gonna. Thank uh, you. It's the logic. So we basically feel the same way. It's yeah. a dumb viewpoint. I don't even watch the NBA for dunks necessarily. Like, 
Not necessarily. So have you been watching my content and you're just basically saying what I said verbatim? Because we have the exact same. Take oh on no, it. I exact same. No, I, I remember hearing idea. that, and they were thinking. That, but I was like, it's not always about the dunk. Like handles is actually more marketable than dunking. Period. And shooting. It, it always has been. Yeah. Yeah, like like. When we're on air, one the the handle the ba the ball handlers are always gonna be more marketable than dunks because dunking's really dope and it's like up there if you bang out on somebody. But like it happens really rare and then it's kind of un it's actually unrelatable because because like only certain people can like sky and dunk. Right. Um, I always thought though with NBA with with girls basketball and WNBA players, I do think like more highlights will bring more attention to the game. But like it's not a couple dunks, right? I think like. No. Girls, it's only evolving though. It's only getting better now. It doesn't need like a rule change, in my opinion. Thank you. Because I think even like <laughs> look at the NBA though, it became more enter entertain. It's more entertainment based today. But the handles of like 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 I said, Jay Will and Iverson were the first like bring street ball to the NBA, and all the NIL. Well, like I said, those girls are gonna go to the WA. It's only gonna go up. Yeah. Well, I feel the same way, and, and I feel like when most people are watching an NBA game, you're not sitting there on the edge of your seat like, who's going to dunk next? Like, that's not no. what you're watching an NBA game for. Like, you'll see it yeah. every once in a while. And I also just, like, from a practical standpoint, lowering the rim, and you're somebody who can also vouch for me, who plays at the park. Do you know what a revamp that would have to be for girls basketball to even have accessibility to a lower rim if we want to make it so, oh, yeah. Women are playing at an, an eight and a half foot rim. So now every church, every park, every wherever needs to now have two hoops. So girls yeah, or can have another one. Yeah. But it's like I used to play with guys a bunch when I was growing up or play at the park or play whatever gym you could get into, basically. Yeah. You would get into. It could so. happen. I was I just don't think that's the fix. I think for the longest time there's there's like a there's a view of women's of the women's game that it's lower than it actually is. And I think there was a, like there was like a perception of basketball snobby. It is though <laughs> yeah. at the highest level. It is though. Like yeah. there was a perception of disinterest because they're garbage at basketball. A lot of people just think, Oh, they can't play. But then now yeah. as time going on, it's like, no, like a lot of girls are super good. Look at Sabrina shot against Steph. Yeah. I couldn't have got Sabrina score well, shooting the threes. I get scored I, the same as Dame who won. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and yeah. Steph just had like a crazy round. She might have won the men's. Right. Like literally, like round for round. Right. It, I mean, it's just, her shooting is insane. And then like... Which is something I do feel yeah. like women can do because we're not... Biologically, we don't have the same like physical assets as men. And I, as somebody who didn't even have the same like athleticism as a lot of my peers who were girls, so I like honed in on shooting because that is something that you don't need like a crazy amount of strength for. You just have to have that consistency. And so even with the NBA turning into this like five out spread game where there's centers shooting threes, like everybody has to be able to shoot a three in the NBA now. Now, yeah. You know, and I think that that's translating over to the- Steph Curry changed the game. Changed it. Yeah. Completely. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, yeah, for sure. Here. But it's only yeah. on the rise. I am interested to see like Angel Reese and- Caitlin. Caitlin Clark, when they go to the WNBA, because mm -hmm. like their and brands Paige, are Paige so Beckers, big. Paige Beckers, who's another one, her handles yeah. are crazy. Yeah, I think I don't know. Fun. I don't know who that is, but yes, you do. UConn girl. I do I? I do. Blonde. She got she got hurt for a couple seasons. But oh, she, oh, nasty. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, no, no, no. Yeah, I do know who that is. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens when they're in the WNBA. I think I think honestly though, the rise of the game, it's all about marketing too. A lot of it's just marketing exposure for a lot of things. So let's think about it. Now we're all into the we, – they were more into the girls' tournament than they were the guys' tournament last year or two years ago. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, fact. Well, there was the – I think Caitlyn's – her most recent game where she, like, broke Pistol Pete's record or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Or, I don't know, whatever record it was, uh, was the highest-viewed college basketball game. Wow. So – have that it's all about entertainment though yeah. it's all about what's a good watch so i just think that i think the WNBA was honestly unexposed and people didn't tune in for waves of thought that were in the culture and i think it's being like unbuttoned now because because yeah. the end of the day like even look at what i do i was never in the nba but it can be an entertaining watch that everybody could buy into and i know that my brand is always bigger or more trending based on how viral you go and there could be ad spend sometimes and like 
Yeah. So it has to do with eyes on the mainstream. A lot of it's marketing. A lot of it's marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of viral videos, uh, for halftime today, I would love to react to some of your viral videos. Let's go. Cool. Let's get it. This first video is with you and another one of my favorites, Jason Williams. Mm. Yeah, yeah. They're at, uh, or you guys are at your space yeah. teaching him a move. So you basically stole the idea that we used to do together and you did it with is Jason it Steely? <laughs> I borrowed it. But no, I love Jay Will. Trick back, I, got, I try to turn the defenders. I'll come up, it could be all type of moves, right? But I want to get you to turn. Boom, so I go here, yeah, okay? Yeah. And then I give a quick in and out cross between legs behind. Between mine. Yeah. yeah like, this is a great you moment. Like that, you know, you like you right Jay's highlights are playing on that thing. It's really dope to watch his career highlights the and then showing him a move that. If I went in and out, it's kind of in their vision. Right. But if it, it's a little more. It's funny, I actually went back and saw an old video where he did that move. Yeah. Oh, he's done it before? He just, did, he just didn't set it up like I did. But I saw an old video from the 2000s where he did it in China. Oh. Yeah. He didn't even remember he did it. To turn this way. He didn't. Yeah. He said that. Sick. He told one of the homies when he left, he's like, I think I did that move back in the day. Do you think that would actually be doable for somebody in the NBA? Sure. How long have you known Jay Will? Yeah, so this was cool. You know, I actually known Jay for like 20 years. We met in 04, 2004 at Madison Square Garden. Oh, cool. Were, were you on tour? Yeah, it was a quick exchange. He came to the and one game. Really quick exchange, but always been really cool. Super cool people, very supportive. And then, uh, you know, this move here is like, I couldn't really give him a new move. I think what I said is there's nothing I could teach you with handles, but I just want you to react to Stuff yeah. that I'll see NBA players do. See what you think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's someone I feel like who, well, first of all, I've worked with him before in the past also, and he's amazing. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It, well, he, actually, my video with him, sorry, but uh, is my most viral short on my YouTube. Oh, wow. Let's go. <laughs> Pasta bars. Dang. <laughs> Lost. It's all good, though. Um, but he was <laughs> actually teaching me how he passes to shooters mm, that's right and he that. was like lining up the laces so that like when i caught it the laces were pretty much lined up lined up for me the seams or whatever you want that's to call a deeper it. level of thinking i don't know if i ever lined up the laces. yeah i mean you you do that when you pass like when you're just shooting around but in game it's so much harder right because you yeah. have to pass in a split second so if you're coming up the court or or if you're passing with one hand this and that but he was able to set it up in a way so his shooters were ready to go because you know in the nba you shuffle the ball defense is there so it's like gotta you gotta shoot quick yeah super quick i know um but that video is really cool so yours has over six million views for let's, that let's get it cool right. yeah let's go so you're getting <laughs> <laughs> i guess beat A little heasy, off the heasy. That's the friendly one, though. The roll off the head. Yeah, that was just like a little tap. Yeah, you know the irony with that one? The irony of that one is that was a collab with the original white chocolate, street ball white chocolate. I think Jay Who Will. Was that? There's a street ball player named White Chocolate. Oh, okay. He'd never been mainstream. Like, he, he won, like, an ESPN show, or excuse me, like, an MTV street ball show back in the day. Yeah. So, he has a following, but not not on the mainstream. But, like, and I'm not sure. I think Jay Will might be actually named after him. But here's the funny part. These were in the same week. This is, like, the next day. Those two vids you show me, these were oh, in the really? same week. Okay. Med might have been the very next day. Yeah. Uh, but, so yeah. So, you collab with both White Chocolates. In the same week. Yeah, it was super Sick. fun. And yeah, it was funny when that person's like, show me what you used to do back in the day, right? Because he's a person who only knew me from Anwar. So I have a very, very uh, interesting demo. A lot of people don't even know I still play, right? I'm like a retro hooper to a lot of people. Yeah. And even in my own mind, you were saying it earlier, like people like I grew up on. Yeah. In my own mind, I'm not a retro hooper. Like we're, we're, we're getting ready to hoop tomorrow. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I can't wait. But <laughs> I am to a lot of people. They find out still play and they're like, you still play? like today? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're like, what? <laughs> it's like, show me what you Cause you know, it's like, what you mean yesterday? <laughs> yeah. Cause digital reach is like a lot of people, but it's just not, it's not the mainstream story. I do like two things a year that hit the mainstream, maybe three, but most of the stuff is like just digital. Yeah. But yeah. I feel like 
it, this is the new mainstream more and more. I think more and more, slo- more and slowly, more. slowly. But I feel like most people pay attention to what's on Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon, and then Spotify and Apple for their music, and then the new sites around the top stars on those platforms. That's what like my mom or whoever they, they just know that. Yeah, but our generation and younger is it's changing. Yeah, it is changing, but it has had a fully changed. Yeah. I feel like yeah, and it's saturated. You know what I'm saying? That's a big part of it too. It's like this might be the new mainstream, but like how many podcasts are that? How many YouTube? Ch- I mean, it's endless, so it can't hit everybody, right? But I don't think anything hits any- everybody anymore. That's Besides true. Besides what, like Barbie or like Cat Williams interview with. Shannon Sharp. But even that so doesn't 62 hit. 62 million. That but but it's not the everyone. world, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not billion. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, so I think saturation has to do with it too. It doesn't feel as mainstream. Whereas yeah. like whatever the number one thing is on Netflix, a big chunk of the culture will talk about that. Right. Right. But even then, it's like the number one thing that's on Netflix will not be number one in two days. Yeah, no, if you can stay Netflix. ranked, if you stay ranked yeah. on Netflix for more than a few days, that's pretty good. It's like Stranger Things is like one that will do that. You know, that that will hit everyone. For a few weeks. But, I mean, yeah. it's crazy. Like, everyone's a creator now. Everyone's a celeb now. True story. Uh, however, this video has 23 million views. Oh, this is a banger. <laughs> this is a banger. Professor Silence's Defender with crazy moves. Yeah, so this was... These are... I think the YouTube vid has, like, 20 million. So this is a heated trash talk. This dude wasn't as familiar with me, though. Didn't... Young dude. Doesn't know Am one. Okay. Lot of lot of ish talk, you know what I'm saying? Back and forth. He fouled me right there. He said he didn't, but he did. Well, that's what you said, right? Most of the time, you can get a move off unless you get fouled. Yeah. On anyone. I'll be honest. I'm gonna say something after this. Watch. This look. He just yeah. He didn't see that. One. It's a wrap. <laughs> Game over. But uh. There's always a way to shake somebody up based on their stance. And then if it's not right, you just pull up. So a lot of people, it's twofold. One is uh, a lot of people will see the vid and be like, why don't you just close your legs or stand up? But it's not. There's a counter for that. You can't close your legs and be on balance. I'm going to go around you and shoot a layup. Right. And then you could be like, oh, why don't you just sag off? And it's like, well, I'm automatic mid-range. That's like a layup. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so, yeah, you do that. You shoot it. Mid-range is not dead. Then you can't. You can't stop between – nobody can really stop between the legs because, like, if I cross over, you have to move, right? I'm going to go to the bucket. So I'm going to pull back. You got to move. You got to stop. So, like, in that instance, I pull back. I step back a little. Like, I'm going to pull – and then it's between the legs. You don't just telegraph, right? It has to be yeah. – when you least expect it is when you do it. Yeah. So that's one thing. But then also, I, I feel like – at certain rates of elite basketball, you can't really stop nobody. Nobody can stop nobody. For real. Like, straight lockup. I feel like the only times we've really been stopped from doing moves or, we're, or whatever, it's like, yeah, people are just hacking. You know what I'm saying? We in the park. Yeah. You just ha- it's ho- or holding. Yeah. A lot of people hold me. Like, it grab my shirt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, with my boyfriend, Dre, obviously, like, defense was his thing, right? And But I feel like with him and what I've come to learn, because I was never a defender. I was like, I just want to shoot the ball. I'll make sure people don't blow by me too much. But yeah. I never really focused on it like that. Him, it's like tendencies. It's watching hours of film on everyone. So it's like your bag is very deep and probably very different than a lot of NBA guys. But yeah, he'll be watching a, a game and he knows every player's tendencies. Like, mm. oh, this player goes left however much. Or he does this in steps. To, you know what I mean? And That's so, huge. You're already waiting on it. So it's yeah. a huge advantage. It's like like... Even for my vids, I don't want to play somebody I played before. Switch that up. Because, yeah. like, it's stupid. We ain't trying to win the, no championships. Right. I ain't trying to prove I'm better than you. Yeah. Like, this dude always, this dude want a rematch. Everybody wants a rematch later. Of course. And I'm like, kill that, bro. I don't even care. You should have, <laughs> yeah. look, you had your chance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> but it's true, though. I mean. Because, it, yeah. Because you, it, it's like if you play a seven-game series in the NBA, right? Mm-hmm. It, it really just comes down to who wants it more, who's more physical. Because we, right. we all, we know everybody's moves. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's why, like, the higher the levels go, you got to have, like, unstoppable move. Yet It comes down to a choice. Like, if I'm going against somebody, based on how they stand, we know how to attack. And if you do this, I'm doing this. Well, if you do that, I'm doing this. Yeah. We do, you really can't. You just got to foul me. 
<laughs> to be honest, to stop moves, you're yeah. just gonna have to foul. Yeah. yeah. That's how I feel. Well, he did there. <laughs> so this one has nearly 60 million views. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember this? This is my biggest short form on two platforms. Here's oh, the, here's the Bugs Bunny. Oh, this ain't even my channel. This is a oh, compilation. Oh, no, this is Omar actually posted this. Omar is great. What, what's the caption on this? It says the professor. <laughs> you can't read it, old man. <laughs> I can't see it. What you it says the professor is one of the best basketball players ever. Oh, that's probably With a fire okay. emoji. Okay, wow. Huh. I love that sound. <laughs> <laughs> that sound was dumb funny. Well, that was the exact move you were talking about. You went between his legs there. Oh, this yeah. guy is big. This guy is oh, really this big, big. This guy's name is Big Jim. <laughs> that was that was mean. That one was mean. For sure, bro. You got to be. They're all mean. <laughs> but that's the thing, too. That's another thing, though. Like, people I know will be like, I want to play you, bro. Think I got a chance. They're like smiling. And I'm like. We're going to have to get, it's going to be ugly. You know what I'm saying? Like, bas I don't like playing people I know are my friends because yeah. at the highest levels, it's actually, you got to get mean. It's, we're not going to be, we might not be friends walking away. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying? you know what I mean? Unless they're like an athlete and they do that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's great. Like, that was cool, Omar, to make that compilation. This first one, though, this one's like, because he go right before this. So this is a separate vid on its own. He goes, you don't really – he goes – the game just, you know, we're a few possessions in. Yeah. And he was like, oh, bro, this dude don't cross nobody, man. He's like, that's all for you two. Right then and there. Oh. He checked the ball. <laughs> I actually just tried to run him over. I just was going – he's a fouling, right? So I went straight through his chest to his – he's like grabbing me, and I pulled back for a second. I saw how he's standing. I went <laughs> brrr, fake the shot, boom, between his legs, he spun around <laughs> and hit the shot right at that moment he just said that. And so then we subtitled it on the short form. Right. And this dude was hot. This dude was hot. I mean, he's stalking our social today. Probably. Has anyone tried to <laughs> fight you? Um, Fewer than you'd think. Yeah, so. Because, like, okay, this, yes and this, no. this big guy right here. Yeah. You didn't actually push him to the ground, but he. Yeah. Okay. That's embarrassing. Like, that there's one was There's a bad. digital narrative on that That one was push. really bad. Yeah, so there's contact for sure. No, no, I'm not saying you did anything wrong. It's just a little, like, you, you didn't push him. You just used him for leverage to go that way. Of course. It's like balance, right? If I go between your legs, the ball's on the other <laughs> side of your body. So we're both yeah. racing to it. Right. Of course I'm going to run into you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and then we're heated. So, I, yeah, I threw I threw him over, man. He's got on my nerves. But but no one's ever, like, most of the time I don't, I don't ever try you. to push nobody. So that's, like, it's usually just a balance hand. That game was, like, we were talking a lot. But, um, yeah, like, in China... I played a CBA preseason game, and I did it in and out behind the back, and the dude like did the splits, like the touch of earth, <laughs> hit the shot. The game was really close, but the crowd started being on our side because we were playing street ball. They're playing it's preseason CBA, yeah. China, Chinese basketball league, like their NBA. And that came down, and then I was trying to go off the heat because I saw how frustrated he was. But that's oh. people don't know. So like my secret is super frustrated if I go off the heezy you're gonna be more frustrated <laughs> that's right at the moment if you go heezy between the legs it's the perfect moment because you're gonna be like and then and then it goes between you know what i'm saying it's too <laughs> it's too much of a whirlwind of things but he moved his head he like moved his head when i threw it so it hit the side of his head <laughs> and then i don't know if it hit his eye or whatever but he was really mad so he picked me up and he threw me like five feet <laughs> And it went on ESPN top ten. Oh, really? And both benches cleared. And it was a big brawl. So once in a, I've had a few incidents, but oh. I actually always try to show people love. Though to be honest, when I now it's like a production. So like if somebody plays, they already know. We try to get moves off. Most people are always sagging off. It's yeah. really annoying. But I show love to everybody. It's never. It never gets personal on my end, to be honest. And I don't even get involved in the trash talk unless it helps the vid. <laughs> well, most most hoopers, I feel like in general, it doesn't get personal because you guys are both in it. Like it, it might in the moment you might be saying something, but then after it's like it's Gabe, you know. Yeah, it depends. But, Sometimes but not, but most people. of the time, most yeah. of the time it's love. Yeah, that's what I'd say. Ninety percent of the time it's love. Maybe with the big gym and a few others, a little awkward <laughs> leaving the gym, but you know, it happens. For me, it's always love. I never have no. 
it's a sport you know what you're, I mean? you're so nice as like a human do you know what I mean? like you really are like you're really Thanks. lovely person and i haven't like, always humble. been that on the court like in the and one days you, you not might not like me leaving the court just because we were all like trying to be the best and try to be more alpha male yeah and i actually did take every matchup personally but that was my own journey like being an underdog and then like being known, you have to live up to your name. Yeah. So I would be offended if people were talking to or thought things and then I'd leave offended, but not now. So. Speaking Thank of, you. speaking <laughs> of, let's watch some oh, let's animal highlights. Let's go. You do look 12, by the way. Yeah. Oh, professor, teach me all of your moves. Oh yeah, we have <laughs> the ladies in there. <laughs> These were great, you know, getting to play in these big arenas. It's you always can never beat the energy of a a big arena going crazy, you know? That's the one thing I you you miss about like in the YouTube era, I don't play in arenas as much. Yeah, that energy so, like, has to be so different. The, the the energy, like this move right here against Headache in Toronto, when I hit I scored after that one. It sounded like Game 7 in the NBA. Like, a lot of our games had Game 7 NBA Finals. Like, feelings, yeah. Like, no, Energy. that the loudness. And yeah. when we play in Madison Square Garden, it literally was like an NBA playoff game or NBA Finals. No lie. So, like, those times are really special. Like, it was, it was really dope. Do you feel like it's like that overseas as well? It was even louder overseas. It was crazy. That's what I'm saying like fans overseas, which has been my first introduction to it this past year, was like, it's like these fans. It's like every game, everything's on the line. You know what I mean? That's how it yeah. feels. It's more once in a lifetime because you might not even go back to that country, and they know right. that, right? So it's spe yeah. more special. It's like you live across the world. Yeah. But yeah, the loudest, the two places we played with the most pandemonium reactions was Japan. Tokyo, Japan, uh -huh. well, Tokyo and Osaka, but Tokyo, Tokyo especially, and then in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Oh, yeah, the I Brazil one was so insane. We played in like a soccer stadium, mm -hmm. and the anticipation, we had never been there, right? And we been going, the show had been going for like four years. I remember I even just did like a behind the back dribble up the court, not even on the defender. <laughs> they lost it like, ah, you know what I'm saying? The behind the back. And yeah. then, like, we actually shook somebody. Like, you might have thought the roof was going to come down. Like, it was, <laughs> it was like crazy. Yeah. We sold out a game on a Wednesday, and they literally were like, hey, we'll pay you guys double. Can you stay till Sunday and do another game? And we That's were like, fun. let's do it. That's cool. Yeah, so Brazil and Tokyo. That's really cool. Those were insane. But I know what you mean. Overseas is always – I used to only do international videos before COVID, like yeah. with YouTube. It was always a great watch, too. Yeah. We saw the we saw the girl with her like shirts. What was that like? Were there a lot of girls coming to your guys' games? Like, oh yeah, it was the group groupie central <laughs> the and one. Say. Yeah, there had to be right. <laughs> the and one times. Yeah, we were living it up. Uh, did you I say mean, out some of that some mix? dudes were married. You know what I'm saying? They did their thing, but most of us were partying every night. We got to the point where we party more than hooping. Like, <laughs> really? Like we were. Just, yeah, it was a. I mean it. it it was a tour. It was like hip hop basketball, though. It was we had six I mean, buses. It makes, it makes sense. I guess it's only surprising to me because the person I feel like I know you as like you don't seem like a partier now. Am I wrong? I never. I only go to events. I don't do. That's parties. what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, you don't. Well, you met I, me in a good evolved state. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you met me like later down the yeah. road, which I love. You have a good perception. I appreciate that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we were the professor was wild. in the clubs. We're wild, yeah, back then. <laughs> wild. Yeah, when I moved to L.A., I was like, that's why I like to party every night of the week. Really? I moved to L.A. in 06, and I would party on a Monday. <laughs> yep. But you didn't have, you didn't have, like, I guess a dark time where you got too wrapped up in it. I don't know. You could debate that. <laughs> you could debate that. I never was a big drinker. I never got into drugs a lot. Okay, but we, the women is overboard for sure. <laughs> oh, but I'm Christian now, too. You know, 2011, okay. I accepted Christ. So oh, like, wow. yeah. So you so know that change. That's what course is a moral you? shift okay. that comes with that. That's like the moral shift from that is like having that relationship. The the fruit of that is like the after effect is your moral. You know, yeah. code is gonna change and everything. So was there something that I stopped partying at that moment? Yeah. Was there something that propelled you into like finding faith? 
Uh, I mean, a lot of, th- I think God uses a whole bunch of things, never like one thing, you know what yeah. I mean? But yeah, like, I mean, going broke and one ends out of nowhere, different ownership chain, right? Could have went for, could have went like the globe Globetrotters forever, but it just so happened it fell in the hands of owners who don't know anything about basketball, much less street ball. Mm-hmm. Like they knew nothing about basketball. So it just ended out of nowhere. So yeah, I mean, hardship. I actually accepted Christ at Escalade's funeral. Mark Jackson's Escalade's brother. You know Mark? Uh-huh. Mark the a- analyst. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of And course. he was a pastor, though, too. So he did the eulogy. Oh, wow. Yeah, in, it was in Brooklyn. Yeah. That's so, 2011. Have you told him about that? Oh, we're like fam. We're tight. Yeah. Mark? Okay. Yeah, I, I hit Mark right now. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So that was the moment for you. And yeah. then it kind of... Obviously... It seems like your life was great beforehand, but do you feel like this kind of took you to, you've been success, I mean, you've been successful for what now? Over 20 years, which is also unheard of in like the Hollywood anything space. It's very hard to like stay relevant, stay consistent, have people still care. Get a about, second chance. Yeah. Have yeah. people still care about what you're doing. Blessing. So like how much do you contribute that shift in your life? Oh, I think it was everything, to be honest. I feel like. I mean, I feel like all good things come from God personally. So I feel like even that get it, like even like my viral video, I got a million subs in a day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. I feel like I feel like I was like ready for it to be used. Now it's like everything's more about like people. You know what I'm saying? You serve people, you serve God. So like my whole platform's now used for that. So I think I was in a good place where God gave me a second chance because I was in a better place than I was before, for sure. Yeah. Like everything I skidded out. For me personally, and all of us in Anwen, but I'm not saying it's because we were rowdy. A lot of celebrities are rowdy, but uh, it's a slippery, I needed it. It's a slippery slope, <laughs> though, as you like we've seen with a lot of celebrities. Mm-hmm. Like you can get wrapped up in that lifestyle, and then you are completely broke. But then you don't get a second chance. And then your career isn't like you have to. You don't make that money back that you had before. Then you get used to a lifestyle that you're living so lavishly. And you can't support that lifestyle exactly what happened. anymore. Went broke. Yeah, like all type was of it, issues. Yeah. Was it because like of the partying or like buying things you shouldn't or? A little bit of everything. I think for me, I was never a big spender. Like I'm not buying boats and car. Like mine was like yeah. just bill spend is higher than we're making every, every month. Yeah. But then you feel like your money stream's endless. Right. And yeah. then some months like, you know. May you make 100 to 200k a month, so we running out of money. Not to me, yeah. I, I got a chain and a band, you know what I'm saying? Like, I go yeah. on trips, I was never a big spender though. Like, I could, I should invest in a real estate at certain times, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But I never, I wasn't making wise investments, but also, yeah, it was a little bit of both. I wasn't thinking entrepreneurially, I was thinking more like a hooper. I just hoop and practice all day. Then when we go on tour, we party and hoop and, and all that. So I, yeah, I was unfocused to a business person, an entrepreneur. I was very unfocused when that ended. So I think that had a lot to do with it. And then, you know, even, even after, you know, you know, finding God or whatever, does I don't want you to think like, or the audience of things was like so polished and perfect now, right? I've had my issues, a lot of things, you know, some yeah. women is still like, you know, she's figuring it out <laughs> as we go, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not putting you on, the craziest pedestal, but I do, I think you're just a great person. Thank I wouldn't you. work with you as much as we have and like have this friendship if I didn't think that. So thank you. And likewise so. too. It's always been great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give for, you know, young hoopers coming up now? Oh, uh, young hoopers or just Fo- what focus space, on the craft, you know? less about, less about the social media, less about the overdoing AAU be a gym rat. Uh, all the players who were stars in the NBA today were gym rats, especially like guards who have high skill level. Not everybody can be six nine and windmill, right? Like, because <laughs> genetics do weigh in, right? There's a lot of guys it who be make like Serge Ibaka who started playing at like eighteen or something. Yeah, yeah, like if you're that athletically gifted, you could actually not love the game and just play a lot and be naturally gifted, right? You yeah. know that you've been around NBA For life, sure. so you know that happens. But most of the time, for most people. You're gonna have to get dedicate an insane amount of time to the to the um, skill development of your game, and that's gonna come with just like time investment. So you gotta like love it. But you know, advice for me, yeah, I tell people like you just you actually have to love it. Like if you don't love it, 
I can't give you any advice to make the pros because you're not cut out for it. Mm -hmm. Like just being honest. Like you may be cut out yeah. for college. Yeah. Like if you, you can actually like it a lot and practice a lot and be a college player, but I don't think you can be a pro, especially if you're a normal size guard, meaning six four and under, you won't make the NBA. You gotta have to love it because your time investment's too much to not love yeah. it. Like you actually won't enjoy it. You just won't put the time. Well, that in. happened to me though. I didn't even love it enough to make it through college. Yeah, like it's a lot, you know, yeah. when the poli even like when I was playing the CBA, you know, like those politics, I I actually got on my pro teams to sell tickets because and one couldn't be higher, right? I mean, it was A list. It was on 50 times a week on ESPN. It was only 50 channels, right? Or something. 50 yeah. to 100 channels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I got on those teams actually to sell tickets. Then when I got there, they're like, oh, we can play. So every team I played, I'll work my way to the starting lineup. And um, it was great. But uh, the politics of the game and the trying injuries. to keep your spot, the injuries, and, you know, you going through an agent and trying to get – it's just a lot. It's a lot. That's what I actually wanted to ask you because that's something that a lot of guys – run into a lot of people in this industry run into is like agents managers taking advantage of them did you ever did, did you ever have any of that i actually had great representation uh i always got deprioritized though not being in the nba so i don't deal with any basketball representation is not mm -hmm. for somebody not in the nba in my opinion you shouldn't yeah. be with an nba agency if you're doing what we do creators or, or if, i know you're saying you're retired but like if you're hooping not an NBA doing the social media thing. You need to stay away from the the, the Rock Nation and the 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 social the yeah. NBA agents, because you'll you'll just be low on the totem pole. They look at it as less less glamour, glamorous. Even if you make millions of dollars, it's just not their priority. Right. So I got deprioritized, and yeah, I had some sticky situations. I think actually most people were great, but maybe I didn't like how they dealt with people relationally, mm -hmm. or didn't feel like I was getting my max potential out of the deal. Yeah. Uh, well, even when you were young, too, yeah. because you were kind of new to making money. And that's, I feel like, when it's the most vulnerable place when you're, like, new to the space. Yeah. People can just latch on to you. They totally can. And, yeah, like, I, I was rep by, like, like uh, the Goodwin t brothers, like, my first few years on Am one And, like, they're cool people. They're, like, dope. And I bet you if you ask Gary Payton how they are, he'd be the best in the world. I'd Mm -hmm. They still rep Dame Lillard when we did that little collab. They were there. And yeah. I saw a dude I haven't oh, seen him in 20 years. Yeah. And they were super cool, but like they didn't care about me at all. Like, you know, we signed a deal. I never spared, I spoke to him once every two months. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that wasn't right, right? Because they're not, they're not really repping me. Like, and it made no sense. We're the hottest show. Like, you could argue it was the hottest show on TV at the time, not mm -hmm. even just sports. It's crazy. But like, I'm not were, hearing from you. <laughs> like, if they were around today, it would be. I would have been one of their top clients. Right, because like you par. see these reality stars who go on shows and just like make a fool of themselves and are multi multi millionaires right after it, and everybody wants to let right that drama. Yeah, that's yeah. Crazy. So I think it's it's all about like I said, it's a lot of stuff is perception and marketing and like the wave of the culture. So in basketball, if you weren't in the NBA, no matter what you did, it's deprioritized. But Outside of and one, you didn't see much outside the NBA that ever like went off and had a mass mm -hmm. audience, right? So yeah. even me coming to social, I didn't know. I was the first basketball influencer of all time on accident. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get bookings, but I was, I'm on all socials with my highlights. So I didn't know, could I have a mass following of a bunch of, I didn't even know if it's possible, right? Now we, yeah. we've learned like, it's all about just being, enter it's entertainment. Yeah. So everybody can, Yeah. if you do it right, or if it's marketable enough. I don't want to put you on blast, but... Turning 40 this year? Let's go. Oh, it's not a blast. I love it. Okay. I'm, hoop, I'm trying to hoop till I'm 50. Okay, that's what that's what I was going to ask. Like, what? where where do we go from here? You said, like, physically you're good. You have all the skills that you had. You, you haven't even hit your peak yet. Oh, I mean, yeah. That's what you told me. I feel like that, yeah. Yeah. So what what is the trajectory? Oh, Did I say uh, that correctly? Trajectory of the professor's career. My goal... You know, I actually never said this publicly. My my goal is to play till 2034, so I'll be 50. Okay. Right? 10 years from now. And uh there's a lot of people in the Hall of Fame that had long standing runs that aren't in the NBA. They're like contributors, right? There's like women successful women coach for 20 years. There's like referees. There's three Harlem Globetrotters individually. The Harlem Globetrotters, a group is in there. Uh -huh. So my shoot for the moon, maybe I'll never reach it. 
land among stars would, to be a contributor in the hall of the hall of fame. But I think like another yeah. 10 years would help more. Right. That's what I think. Cause that would be a 30 year basketball career, professional basketball career. Yeah. Essentially. And I don't want to play if I can't put on a show at like a good level, you know what I mean? Yeah. Cause it's still already gone 21. I play, I'm older than LeBron. So we're 21 years in. We, he's a pro Oh three. Yeah. I'm am one Oh three, but I'm actually like six months older in age. So, yeah, that's my shoot. For the, that's my shoot for the moon. Land amongst not? the stars, goal. Because if it doesn't happen, it's still a great run. It's all good. But I honestly, yeah. I don't see why not. I don't see why not. Because you've go. a, you've you. affected basketball in like every aspect of the sport. You know. Oh wow, humble. For sure. sure. I mean, you were just so. on. You were just on KG's show, and like to see him kind of, not fanboy, but. <laughs> Give you props the way that he did for coming from. That was amazing. Know? Yeah, KG is the man. That yeah. was so fire. And he used to be an and one guy too. He was signed to and one like before we I was even on there. Yeah. So it was a full circle moment. That was really cool. I mean, you get props from all of these people who might end up there. It's like they don't need to blow smoke. They don't have to say that. You know what I mean? They they're around everyone. They're around every Hall of Famer, yeah. every NBA player. So, so Laura, Laura Willie, you know. Yeah. We'll have to see. But let's put it out there. Let's go. I think it's a possibility. Let's go. Um, last question for you. Who is one person who's come up to you, given you flowers, um, been a fan of yours, that really surprised you or, like, meant a lot? Oh, Iverson himself. Like, I, when I was growing up, yeah, I loved Anwin just as much as I loved Iverson. Jordan Iverson and Jay Will, my favorite NBA players growing up. And then uh, when I met Jay Will, or excuse me, when I met Iverson was actually, we went on tour in China and I played his last three games he ever played with him on the same team, on the backcourt. Did I not know this? It's my first NBA collab on YouTube before the word collab existed. Right. I got the footage from the promoter. I didn't ask for clearance. It's, it's early YouTube though, so I didn't even, it didn't feel like a big thing. Yeah. But the promoter was the homie. Slid me the footage. They shot it horrible, but it still worked. We edited it to make it as good as we can. That was my first NBA collab. Is like three games in in China with Iverson, and then oh, that's he knew who we were, and like he was a big he t man. We were flying private on the way back because I did two stints when we did something in the Philippines in 2014, and he was going off. He talked about what he was a fan of me for like. 15 straight minutes, 10 minutes real time, and then Bone Collector and on the on the flight home. It was, it was crazy. It was very surreal. That's so cool. Yeah, so that was my... Obviously being your idol, too, you're, that you're on the court with him all of a sudden. Yeah, like, even... A it's a little hard to process, too, because, like, people are at a distance in entertainment, and then, like, yeah. you're like, wait, you meet him, you, you're shocked they know you, but it's like, wait, you're actually a fan? Like, that was he even me. asked me, he's like... Cause I told him that crossover, bro. I was like, that was the first move that was like the cheat code move for me. I cross over grown adults. I was like this tall. You know what I'm saying? Literally, I'm <laughs> yeah. four foot something. And he he was like, Why'd you stop doing the move? And I was like, I mean, they started calling it carry, you stop, I stop. You know what I'm saying? Wow. That's <laughs> yeah. cool. Yeah. That's like my moment uh when I went up against Candace Parker in the NBA All Star Celebrity that was game. Sick. She started guarding me and it was like it's like all noise went away, but then I was overcome. Like I was overwhelmed with fear, actually. <laughs> so I was like, it's hard I said, though, right? Wait a second. That main stage. Yeah, I'm like, why are you guarding me? I can't do anything with you guarding me. <laughs> like, why are you here? But you it was, played good though. Yeah, no, yeah, it was great. Okay, but when she and I think this was also my New Orleans game because I played in two. That's right. Um, I played well in both, but. When she guarded me, she said, you better not shoot it. You better not shoot it. Because, of course, that's all I was doing in both of those games. I said, don't worry. I won't. And, like, literally passed it. <laughs> You're so <laughs> I funny. Like, I was like, I'm good. <laughs> like, <laughs> You're so, like. Candace, I respect your game. <laughs> but that's how I, that's, yeah. But that was someone I watched. from, And I always wanted, like, my, my dream was to go to the University of Tennessee. And I wasn't good enough to get there. I made mm. Division One, But Tennessee at the time, it was, like, UConn and Tennessee were that's by a mile. Go to your you know schools, what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And so, like, I had so much, like, Tennessee gear, and she was one of my favorite players. And so to for me to never play professionally, but then to have that moment, which felt like a – like, being on the biggest stage I could possibly be on without ever playing pro with her, it was just really cool. That's super dope. Yeah. Literally. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. What else should we be on the lookout for? 
Uh, stay tuned to my socials. I've been promoting this for a while, but I'm literally close to launching now. If you go to crossover5.com, crossover spelled out, number5.com, sign up. You get a free video. It's all free, but you'll be notified. I'm trying to drop my program, my online program. Okay. You know, cool. where pe people can learn handles from me, and then you can sign up monthly if you want to be on a live. I'm going to go live once a month, do the workouts. So look out for that. It's called Crossed Up University. Crossed Up. I need it. Crossed Up University. Okay. That's <laughs> sick. I yeah. could definitely use that. Let's go. <laughs> As you know, my handles oh, are got so you. you know what I'm saying? you in-house. You know what I'm saying? We'll get the free. Yeah. yeah. You need like a, if you need like a, a women's side. I can demo that. Hey, you never know though, because I do want to expand. Like, it's to start with handles, is what everybody knows me as. Mm -hmm. But eventually, we go into shooting and all that, because can't just be effective in one area, right? No. People don't even know that mid range. Like I said, a mid range is auto. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we'll talk. Thank you so much. This thanks, was amazing. Thanks for having me on. Welcome awesome. back. Yeah. Season three, you'll be back again. Honored. Let's Wait go. For my text. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>